welcome to the 3D printing closet. We have a project underway. Calibrating, calibrating, testing, one, two, three, calibrating. What are we printing? Yeah! Let's check out Hannah. Decided, um, kind of coming to some conclusions here. Even after pulling out, <clears throat> pulled out the big internal sump out of my tank that had the sponges in it and whatnot, the nitrate factory. <laughs> it's not, even if I, after I pull that out, I have zero nitrates. I've got to start feeding my tank a little bit more. More importantly, now that I'm starting to kind of get more corals in the tank, I feel like um, I need to start testing for alkalinity. Testing for pH is kind of a hit and run. Stepped up my game with the Milwaukee tester. And that's pretty much staying on par with, um, uh, with my pH kit, right? You pop in three drops of this stuff and then you let it, you shake it about and let it ride. And it's been pretty on par with, um, with the Milwaukee, so Rather than go through the rigmarole and hoopla of adding those drops and squirting water, you just drop this bad boy in the tank and it gives you a nice little readout right there. And I don't have to worry about daylight and all that stuff trying to figure out that color chart. Hannah, what is Hannah doing over here? Aside from taking all my money, hard-earned cash. Oh, those bad boys want to come out. Get out! I end up breaking that thing. Don't get your fingerprints on it. <laughs> All right. Easy enough. Boom, boom. Right. Of course, I need a screwdriver so I can get this battery in there. I can get the battery out of here. There we go. Triple A. So back in the day, when AMD was first coming on, every time you purchased a CPU from them, they'd send you one of these snazzy little computer screwdrivers. You gotta love them. They come in super handy. Because this screw, this little itty bitty screw here, it's a pain. You really have to have a decent screwdriver to get that bad boy out of there. Alright, so how am I going to get you out? Any instructions how to get you out of there? Turn the instrument upside down. Use a screwdriver to unfasten the screw and remove the battery cover. Remove the old battery. Well, how are you supposed to? It doesn't tell you how to get that off without ruining it. not be that hard. They should have a little tab on there, right? They're going to take $60, $50 of mine. Oh, look at that. It doesn't even want to come off. Holy cow. So it's got that plug. It's plugged in there. They don't leave you any method of pulling that out. What? Who is the beautiful engineer behind this, huh? <laughs> Gotta love them. Right. Does it tell you which side goes up and down? Well, it's got a plus up on top, so we have to assume that the minus is down below where we can't see it. <laughs> Some really smart people. But they sure know how to take your money though, don't they? Hey, they did not provide a little cloth for this, a little microfiber cloth. The last uh, piece of junk test kit that I got provided a little microfiber cloth. All right, I'll have to go get one. Here we go. So, take that bad boy off. Let's read the directions. Ooh. Bum, bum, 
Bum. Press on and off button to turn the checker on. Uh, fill the cuvee with 10 milliliters of unreacted sample. Okay, let's go get our 10 milliliters. Oh, oh, where did we fill it to? Oh, right there. Okay. Oh, we have to put this in there. Duh. But that was not, it didn't say put it in there, did it? Okay, let's go back and read that. Let's see. Fill the cuvee with 10 milliliters of unreacted sample and replace cap. Insert the cuvee into the checker and close the cap. <laughs> I guess I don't know how to read. <laughs> All right, put it in there. Close the cap. Check. Now press the on off button. When this display shows add, So now it's gonna blink on us. Boom, so it shows add C.2 and that presses blinking just like it says. Now remove the covet and unscrew the cap and using the one milliliter syringe, carefully add exactly one milliliters of H1772S. So we've got 1.0 at the bottom, 0.9, 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.6, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.1. One milliliter must be then all the way past the 0.1 up to the next one, which is zero, right? I mean, that makes sense to me. Should make sense to you. <laughs> My drill sergeant used to say that. Makes sense to me, should make sense to you. Now it doesn't tell you, do you take the water line up there? Or do you take just the rubbers up there? I'm gonna assume we're just taking the bottom rubber up there. I'm gonna look that up, but I'm gonna assume we take the bottom rubber, bottom rubber up there and that that blank space is equivalent to what's left at the tip of this little syringe, but I don't know. We'll check it out and see. So then I squirt it in. Yeah, got that right. I touched the vial, didn't I? I contaminated the vial. All right. So now I've got that in there, and then it says. Replace the cap and gently invert five times. Ooh, we have to be gentle. One, a two, a three, a four, a five. All right, we like that nice and gentle. Pay attention not to spill reagent. Otherwise, full color development may be inhibited. Well, we don't want that. We don't want any inhibition. So let's see. Insert the cuvee. Oh, 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 oh. Wash your thumbprints. We don't want to contaminate, inhibit, impede the test. All right, pay attention. Well, I already read that. Insert the cuvee into the checker and close the cap. Press the on off button. The instrument displays alkalinity. Boom, press the on off button. I pressed it and now it's giving me a blink. I'm gonna go ahead and set it down and I'm gonna watch it. Whoa, 5.6, I am low. How low can you go? I'm gonna assume that Hannah test is good and, and correct, but I'm curious if I, if I use the wrong amount. I was supposed to bring the actual liquid line up to the bottom of that. So I'm going to go ahead and do this little alkalinity test here. This is the Red Sea, the Red Sea test kit. All right. Red Sea test kit is the one where you do drops. Five drops at a time. Five. Okay, we're 
color am I? I am blue. I am blue, blue, blue. Still blue. So I should be able, able to add another five without it changing color. Now one thing I noticed on this is that um, you absolutely have to keep this straight up and down. If you do it sideways, the drop is smaller. If you do it straight up and down, the drop is bigger. And what I also do, sometimes there'll be a little air bubble stuck in here. So I'll go ahead and squeeze the air out and make a perfect drop. Then I'll come over to my vial and add the drops. One, two, three, four, five. Let's see. Uh-oh, I turned yellow already. So now what that's telling me, uh, it's one over. So actually, it's, it's, a, it's a minimum of one over. See, see, it turned yellow already. So it's a minimum of one over because um, the 10th drop would have turned it yellow if nine drops turned it green. But we don't know. Could have been eight drops that turned it green. Could have been less than that. Last night after I, uh, I was closing this all up, I noticed there was this little deal inside. <laughs> and, um, and I also went online and double checked um, I'm not sure what the purpose of this is, like ultimately what's the purpose, because if I pull one milliliter up, which is at the end of the numbers, um, I don't know why they do it backwards like that. It's Maybe it's the medical industry that's doing that. Anyway, um, I'm not sure why they have this tip on here. Maybe so that you don't get the inside of this dirty over time with the reagent. but. Um, Let's go ahead and do it again. And again, I'm not going up to the, I'm not using the needle. I'm using the, the line that is on. I think you can see it there. Oh, I didn't quite get there, did I? And I'm going past the, the bottom of my little upside down bubble there is touching the line or not touching the line, but it's at the line. I don't know if you can see it there. It's the bottle of that, I forget what you call that. <laughs> Bottom of the bubble is, is at the level of the line. We gotta turn it on, right? Turn it on. All right, now it's flashing. Let's put this in, close it, turn it on again. I'm not sure if I should be holding it when it's doing that. Flashing now, now it's giving me the C, the dot C, C dot two. There we go. The bottom plunger is right to the top of that line. Three, four, five. Wipe my grungy fingerprints off of it. Plop it in. And we will hit the button again. 5.5. First it builds the boat. Then it goes right on inside and starts printing, which is what it's doing now. It already built the boat. The boat is the outline on the outside. I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know. Here we go. Fill the inside. This is a long process. Let's take a look. Seven and a half hours is how long this is going to take. <laughs> we are almost finished with the first layer. <laughs> Been an hour and eleven-ish minutes. That's as far as we've got. And yet another hour has passed. It's been two hours. Ooh, look at that! It's starting to take shape. Kind of a noisy 3D. We're now 
in the third hour of our print. Like our project has completed after seven long, grueling hours. Let's get that over and see how it works. So here's the case that it comes in. Look at the vial fits perfectly there. Put the cap on that. Put the needle in there. Backwards, boom, boom, no. Ah, sweet. How slick is that? Got your reagent. Well, I don't know, maybe not too slick. You know what it might do is put a little gummy down in there, huh? That is pretty nice though. <laughs> One spot. Spicy Reef here signing off. Now what are you doing? I think I got it. How do you know if it's up or down?